Ask Credit by Nlwafti. What cars would you never touch, even with a 30-foot bar? PT Cruiser, Chrysler 200. My first car was a PT Cruiser and I was expecting to find it as a top comment here. Honestly the ridiculous design and goofy interior really grew on me over time aesthetics are subjective after all. Too bad the car itself was an absolute piece of shit. Nothing would ever just work on that thing. Something was always wrong. Also it weighed like 4000 pounds. Why? Fuck you that's why. Someone else's car. Don't touch someone else's car. Especially with a giant bar. GM's upcoming vehicles without CarPlay and Android Auto. Fuck that decision. Unless they show some sort of ironclad guarantee that they will keep providing software updates for the entire time I can keep the car legally on the road or have the entertainment system be changeable with a standardized space like they used to be 10-15 plus years ago I will never buy a car that does this sort of bullshit. Nissan Duke. Looks like a frog made a wish to become a car. My wife has a Duke. Dukes are awful to look at but rather pleasant to be inside. Much like my wife. Another Ford Taurus. Ugh. For a year I had a total lemon. Go ahead and add Mercury Sables too. Biggest lemon I've ever owned. Maserati. It's a mistake I simply can't afford to make. The only nice thing is the two models that are actually worth a damn depreciate like 70% in the first 24 months. The trick is to not be the person to take that hit. Range Rover. Shit is trash. Surprise there is not more of this. I remember being a passenger in one outside of Giesen and in an off ramp the driver is downshifting and suddenly says hold this, he hands me the gear shift. I've never heard 30 foot bar. Only 30 foot pole. Yeah, the army must have glitched on this bot. No one says 30 foot bar. Inexpensive Ferrari. Wanna turn a billionaire into a millionaire? Get him into yachting. Wanna make a millionaire broke? Get him into old Ferraris. The only thing more expensive than a new Ferrari is an old Ferrari with potential. I was browsing used cars a few years ago and noticed a lot of older used Ferraris were in the $30 40k kind of range. That was, that was affordable. I could own a Ferrari. A voice in the back of my head whispered it's a trap. I heeded that voice. To this day I do not own a Ferrari, but I remain confident that I chose wisely. Ford Focus with the DCT. Ah. The good old power shit transmission that resulted in them losing a $2 billion lawsuit. Lots of companies have released products that turned out to be shit, but Ford released a product they knew was shit. Which is too bad because those later Focus and Fiesta are decently nice for their segment, aside from the time bomb transmission obviously. Any Jeep Wrangler built after 2006. Source. Former 06LJ owner and current 21JLU owner. At the end of the day, it is still a Chrysler. Anything Fiat Chrysler. Buddy bought a Promaster, which is some kind of Fiat design. I learned this from him. Fiat, fix it again Tony. Ford Pinto. For anyone who doesn't know. Ford was cool letting people die because it cost less than replacing the part that turned the vehicles into fireballs. They did the math between replacements and insurance settlement values. Ram truck. I wouldn't piss on one if it was on fire. I'm in Australia and we're just starting to see them everywhere, like what the actual hell. They have next to no use, aside from towing maybe. Just the most selfish shitty people own them. Just a cancer. Apparently any car. Haven't seen a single Toyota Honda Mazda pop up until now. Christine or little bastard. She takes premium dude. Premium. 
Dodge Journey. My in-laws had two with that little four-cylinder engine and they were radically underpowered with that 2.4L engine. It was so underpowered that sometimes I struggled to get up to highway speed on a normal on-ramp. You need to jack it up and remove the front left wheel to get at the battery and we pretty much had to tear the fender off to replace the water pump. Top it off with a 1000 pound towing capacity for a compact SUV and that car is just trash. My 2001 Chrysler Interpid had the same battery location. Fucking boat of a car and they couldn't find a worse location for the battery. I've owned two Nissans. Murano and a Titan. The random mass issues that popped up were enough to persuade me to fucking hate them forever. I had both, too. The CVT, transmission, in the Murano and the front differential in my Titan were trash. Cybertruck. I've seen a few driving around. I don't get the hype. It's the ugliest vehicle I've ever seen. Teslas in general. Unreliable, cheaply built, sold on hype not on actual quality. Awful to get them serviced, repaired, and everything related to ownership. And X200B. They're the iPhone 6 of cars. Nissan Cube. I absolutely loved my Cube until I tried to drive it cross country and it became stricken with a mysterious not diagnosable electrical issue where it would stop functioning at highway speed after driving it 36 miles distance. I got towed to two different dealerships in New Mexico. Both could not figure out what was wrong. Ended up shipping it to my home state. I had less than 40,000 miles on the Cube. I drove it to a Toyota dealer and traded it in for an ICE RAV4. They said not to worry about the electrical issue and they thought the high heat temperature in New Mexico caused the drive-by wire to malfunction in the cube. It, basically everything but Toyota or Honda. Vimfast. Anything that would make someone think mall terrain vehicle. The one parked in the core of the Chernobyl nuclear generation plant. Backstory? Never, never, never a Nissan. I love my old, 90s, Nissans. It makes me sad to see what they've become.